And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Did I mention that the pills kicked in? <laughs> Which ones? Ah, good point. It's time, Bunny! It's time. It's time. <laughs> yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to funky chicken our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new, all, our all new unrated director's cut now in select theaters for a limited time now featuring 12 minutes of never before seen footage movie on! Oh, wait! wow that was yeah. impressive yeah that was good eleanor and this week we continue our celebration of the vacating of a womb of the man the myth the bunny with bun tober which is when my partner in crime bunny takes over the show and for this our third bun tober film this year we thankfully leave the cronenberging behind with a look at george lucas's 1973 american classic American Graphophyte. Yes. Graphophyte. A, a, yes, a long time favorite. Hold on. Hold on. Which Hold on. raises a lot of questions. Yeah. A lot of questions. Hold on a second, Bunny. Uh, Eleanor's been dying to say something. We caught a spider. You have a spider? Yeah, we caught it outside. Yeah, during the break, uh, we both went outside and we caught a spider. Cool. What did you name the spider? Spidey. Okay, I wanted to call it Fido Dido, but Eleanor <laughs> went with Spidey. Ah. I had a couple of names that were really good, including Fido Dido, Double Decker Soul Wrecker, and Lou Ferrigno. But you didn't like any of those, and I was very upset about that, and I still am. You're, uh, you're out of the will. But see, now you have to figure out how to irradiate the spider. Yes. And, and then get, then it, to get it to bite you. Yeah. No. Or we get irradiated and we bite the spider. So yeah. then it doesn't become Spider-Man. It becomes Man-Spider. The spider with all the powers of a man. He's the only spider who can do his taxes. Yeah. Now, Bunny, before we get into it, if I may have the floor. Sure. May I have the floor? Uh, you may have your floor. I'm kind of using my floor. Okay. Well, if I may have the floor, please. Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't get the floor. American Graffiti. No. Stop it. No. It is a certified classic. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. You're messing with all of mom's 800 tabs on her laptop. Okay. American Graffiti, certified classic. A funny and sweet look at small town America in 1962. It is a cinematic time capsule. It is a truly great film. The soundtrack, amazing. Modesto. The band who plays at the freshman dance comes all the way from Stockton. Uh, great film. No BS. Wonderful movie. The film is great. Now! Let me tell you why I fucking hate this movie, Bunny. Okay. Okay. People see this movie now... And they go, oh, what an amazing look back at a much simpler time. It really just transports you to 1962. It really is just a time machine, and it's amazing, and it's incredible. But, Bunny, look at the dates, Bunny. Look at the dates. Oh, yeah. American oh, 1962. Gra American Graffiti is a 1973. Three film about how life was like way back 
in 1962. That's 11 years, Bunny. Yes. 11 years. 11 years is nothing, Bunny. Give me a break with those 11 measly years. And if we are saying anything, we are saying that this town is really behind the times. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Modesto. Channel 172. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, allow me to pitch you an exciting new movie. I don't want to call it an American graffiti reboot, but uh, it's, it's, it's definitely in the same style. I call it American planking. Okay. It transports the audience all the way back to that far, far away year of 2011 where everything was different. Yes. Takes you back to just a better time. Specifically, our film focuses on planking culture, which was really big back then. Planking was really the cruising of 2011. Yeah. And everybody was just going everywhere I, and planking on things. I am really excited for this movie right off the bat. Cause you know what? I kind of missed it the first time around. Yeah. So we're really going to take a good look at planking life. Uh, just imagine everybody is on their phones playing angry birds and talking about their favorite twilight movie. And there's a big, long argument with one girl who is excited that Breaking Dawn is being broken into two films and another girl who is upset that it should just be one film. Yes. And then the boys come along and say, what? You guys are talking about Twilight. That's so lame. We're excited about the upcoming Hobbit trilogy. Yes. That's going to be way better. So everyone's busy playing Angry Birds. Uh, all the cars that are driving around, which look totally different from cars now. Uh, they will be playing all the big hits of the time. LMFAO, Katy Perry, and of course, Rebecca Black's Friday. Yes. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. You get to fart on Friday? You're doing your own cover over there. Everyone is quoting Charlie Sheen. Duh. Winning. Sure, go for it. And planking while playing uh, Nintendogs on their 3DS. And talking about how hot Taylor Lautner is. American planking in theaters 2022. That's the thing. We really need to rush this movie into production. Because if we don't release the movie this year, we'll have to completely, we'll have to do an entire rewrite from top to bottom. Yes. Because it won't be about 2011 anymore. It'll be about 2012. We'll probably have to call it like American Bazinga. Yes. Or American Adam Lambert or something. I don't know. Funny. Do you know how proud I am of this bit? I am how, how proud are you? I am so proud. And bit. I'd like to do a shout out uh, to the website pop-culture.us. I have used it so much for this, for this, for this podcast. Number one, of course, is Wikipedia. The Wikipedia can't be beaten. But right below that would be pop.culture-us. It is a godsend of a website. Really? Yes. And, and you just you can just go to any website and it tells you, here's the big things this year. Here's who won all the sporting events. Here's the big news. Here's the weird news. Here's the top songs. Here's the top movies. Here's the sex symbols of the day. It, it has helped me so much. Cool. Uh, please stop singing that song, okay? Please. Please. Or I am getting the spider we just caught. I'm letting it loose in your room. No. Yeah. So please stop singing Everyone Farts on Friday, okay? Please. 
okay? And don't get me wrong, it's it's obviously going to be a hit song, but we just need to work on it. We need to fly in Jeff Chris to do the mixing to get this thing really popping. I was thinking we need some ukulele on this bitch. Yeah, we need some ukulele on this bitch. Okay, I'm 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 setting loose the spider. Okay, then stop singing Everyone Farts on Friday. Okay? Stop singing songs, period. Okay? Why don't you you know what? I just what? I just got a text. It's from mom. She really wants to hear your song. She really wants you to sing it over and over again, even when she says for you to stop. Uh, Natasha just screamed from the other side of the house. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby, which uh, didn't know she could hear this. But hey, you know, that's fine. Anyway, the fun bit is over. Now let's talk about this freaking movie. <coughs> it's a great film. It's a wonderful film, and I love it. That being said, I only care about the drag racer and Mackenzie Phillips. Everyone else can go F themselves. Really? I don't care about Ron Howard. I don't care about I don't care about Opie Cumming Cunningham. I don't care about Laverne and Shirley. Richard Dreyfus is 17, but somehow he's still acting like a 50-year-old man. Yes. I'm rooting for Toad, and the only one I really care about is the drag racer in Mackenzie Phillips. I their whole dynamic is adorable. And I'm and I, I showed that I showed a bit of it to uh Natasha, and my wife said, uh, what they just leave this 12-year-old girl with this guy? And it's like it, it was a different time. I can understand as the you know, you're the younger child and your parents are like, oh, if you're going to go out, take her with you. So they just saddled her with a stranger and took off. And that's the only plot line that I actually care about because they they don't know each other. They're in the same car and they end up kind of liking each other. And I lo- but not in a creepy way. Yeah. Although the word rape is used way too many times in this movie for my taste. Yes. I still love their entire dynamic and and it makes the film for me. I forgot how much I had a crush on Mackenzie Phillips when I was a kid. Well, if I was going to rank them, uh, yeah, yeah, I, either that I, for me, I think it's a close neck and neck between that storyline and the Toad storyline, which I really yeah. enjoyed. Yeah, Richard Dreyfus is okay. But he's also basically the plot of the movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I could have totally done without Ron Howard. Opie Cunningham? Yes. I could have totally gone without Opie Cunningham. Yeah. I will say, though, seeing uh, Opie Cunningham in a movie... It has been so long since I've seen this, but I still just hear Arrested Development in my head. How so? What do you mean? He was the uh, Ron Howard was the narrator of the show Arrested Development. Was he? I don't remember that. Yeah, he was the narrator. He was the executive producer and the narrator. And so it, even when he's like still like a wet behind the ears green kid in this movie, I still hear him as an adult narrating uh, Arrested Development. It, that was fascinating to me. I didn't yes. think I liked that show that much, but apparently I do. See, now, I would argue that this is George Lucas's best movie. Um, From a filmmaking perspective, storytelling perspective, This is his best. Uh, I think everyone knows what his best film was. His best film was when he said, you know those three action movies I did? What if we did it with better special effects, but instead of action, it's just about trade disputes. (laughs) That's his best film. Period. 
Because he uh, doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of films. He does not have a whole hell of a lot of films. <clears throat> so, uh, Th- THX 1138 is a boring fucking movie. Okay, so so and you the never reason... hear it brought up in conversation when people are talking about good science fiction movies. You'll only hear it brought up when people are talking about George fucking Lucas. I do like how he keeps trying. Yeah. Like in American Graffiti, one of the license plates is THX 138. Yeah. And then in the first Star Wars film, where are you taking this thing? Prisoner transfer from cell block 1138. We get it. You like your first film. (laughs) Okay, we get it. You're the only one. Uh Uh-huh. The reason why American Graffiti exists is because Francis Ford Coppola said, hey, you know, it, and this is all over the Internet. This story is all over the Internet. This was on uh, Mental Floss. This was on Wikipedia. This was on all over the place that like Francis Ford Coppola and his weird art collective, you know, are there of all those filmmakers. And right. uh, he he puts up money to get THX 1138 made. And then it bombs because it's depressing as F and weird. And so Francis Ford Coppola said, "Uh, George, I loved your first film, but I would challenge you to make something that everyone will love and that will take the nation by storm. Can you do that? And what that story sounds to me is just a nicer way of saying, hey, Lucas, it's me, Franny Coppola. Hey, that THX 1138 was good, but how about for your next movie? Why not try making a movie people fucking like? Yeah. And I mean, and and Star Wars is the only reason why this movie exists. And Star Wars was a good movie, but it was a very simplistic movie. The plot was very simplistic. It it was just completely linear. This happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and you get to a nice end. It's a fun little ride, but like. It's not great cinema. You know what I mean? I feel that But here's what I'm going for. That George Lucas' best movie, in my opinion, American Graffiti, is the one that pissed him off so much because there was too much studio interference in the movie. So, this is the one George Lucas doesn't particularly like. And I am really wondering, I, I feel that that, that, I think George Lucas kind of sucks. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Just basically as a filmmaker, he's not really that great a filmmaker. Eleanor, what's wrong? Okay. Um, what do you want me to do about it? What can I, how can I help you? Okay, you think about it, and I'll keep doing this. Um... American Graffiti, a 1973 film, a prequel to the Star Wars franchise, starring Ronnie Howard and Richie Dreyfuss. Uh, Crazy hot take, Bunny. I got a hot take for you. All right. Dazed and Confused is American Graffiti for the 70s. Oh, sure. Even down to the cool older friend. Yes. Who graduated before everyone else well, and is kind in, of a pervert. That, yeah, it's in that same genre, the the coming of age high school thing. I never liked Dazed and Confused. I have fun with it. it, it there's no one there I would ever be friends with. And there's another one in between these two movies. I just can't think of what it is, but the same thing. Bunch of well, fucking goddamn almost The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, yeah. I mean, that's I, basically I the same that. thing. I saw that at the beginning of this year. It was weird. The The TV edit of The Breakfast Club is hilarious. Really? Because it was edited back when it first aired on TV in the 80s, and so it still maintains that like TV edit of... Uh, Oh, yeah, it was a banner freaking year in my family. 
my freaking dad said, hey, so-and-so, get your Mickey Thicky keister up and do things, you cockeyed fellow. You know, that, that bad dubbing? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's hilarious. Uh, so, this is another something I wanted to mention about this week's film, American Graffiti. So, in 1973, uh, American Graffiti comes out. And six years later, in 1979, a very bad sequel called More American Graffiti came out and spawned a trend of yeah. bad sequels to classic films. Who can forget Apocalypse Even Nowier? Even Nowier, yes. And uh, Raging but, Bull. But, but, but they, they really did some Raging awesome Bolt. work in that movie with puppets. Yeah. It, you can't you know, deny that. What other sequels uh, were in this trend, Bunny? I've got a few of them. Who could forget Amadeus 2, Amadeus, Amadeus? That's where that song came from. Amadeus, Amadeus. Yeah, Amadeus 2, Amadeus, <coughs> Amadeus. So that was, uh, that was another bad sequel to a classic well, movie. Well, there was, there was the, the Gandhi 2, Gandhi Eats Pork. Which was yes. highly controversial. It was just Gandhi going into like a hometown buffet and just going to town. Who could forget ET2 extra extra read all about terrestrials? <laughs> that 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 featured the entire cast of both ET and broadcast news. Yeah. Yeah. Platoonier. Platoonier. Platoonier was the platooniest platoon. Mm -hmm. Indiana Jones in the search of where the hell is the goddamn toilet paper? To be fair, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a classic, amazing, perfect film, and they did have a shitty sequel. It was called Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull, whatever. Oh, God, yes. Uh, do the wrong thing. Do the wrong thing, yes. Yeah. Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time Twice. <laughs> and then the subtitle was Twice Upon a Time Part Two. Yes. So it was it was a really long title. Bluer Velvet. Bluer Velvet. Followed by the third in the trilogy. That's, that sounds, that sounds way more pornographic. Yeah. Yeah, blue or velvet. Oh, he, this one's my favorite. <laughs> Elephant men. Elephant men. <laughs> because the last one just had one elephant man. So for the sequel, they're going even harder. Elephant men. Now, if that's a mad scientist creating an army of elephant men. Yeah. I'm down. Conditioner. Conditioner. <laughs> That was the sequel to Shampoo. Oh. Oh, well, that's uh, and, hardly a classic. Yeah. And who can forget the prequel Half Metal Jacket? Half Metal Jacket. It's before the jacket became a full jacket. Yes. Uh, the Touchables? The Touchables. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, this one's, I like this one. Das Bunch of Boots. Das Bunch of Boots. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even Meaner Streets. <laughs> oh, and this one I like. This one I like. Alice Moved Back Here. Alice Moved Back Here. But since they are doing sequels now uh, from older movies such as Bill and Ted and I can't think. There are a few more Top floating gun. around that that talk. Top Gun, yeah. So I, I am I am suggesting that a modern sequel in that vein would be Uber Driver. Nice, yes. yeah. Uber Driver. They kind of made that movie. It's called Spree, and it stars uh, Steve Harrington from Stranger Things. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's a movie that came out during the pandemic, during the lockdown, 
It's a horror movie about this guy who does like Uber and he wants to be a popular streamer, but no one cares. And then one time while he's driving and streaming, he accidentally kills someone and more people watch. So he just goes on a killing spree. Yeah. Okay. Because people are watching him. It, 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 it's a pretty good movie and it's got a really good cast and I like it. But it, 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 it's pretty I it, don't know. It's, Steve, it's cheap as hell. Steve Harrington has to do whatever he could do to get as much cash as he can right now because if anybody yes. walks away from Stranger Things as a trivia question, it's him. Yeah. Yeah. But I was really impressed with his work in Spree. He's a he's a pretty good actor. I'm glad I was I was just happy to see him in something else, you know? Keeping keeping in the theme of the movie, okay? More or less. He he is the Ralph Mouth. Yeah. Of Stranger yeah. Things. Yeah. And it'll end and we will never hear from him again. Well, uh yeah, probably. I like him though. I like him. I I liked Ralph. Uh, that's all I've got. That's all I've got for this film. It's a good film, and I like it. It's a classic. There was a Mel's Diner in Sacramento, uh, by my bookstore. Yeah, Natasha and I had eaten there a number of times. Well, I I, I am using this. If I have one thing to say about this movie, I am using this movie as an example, as proof and evidence that George Lucas eh, not really that good of a filmmaker. Mm. Me, yeah. What what yeah. the fuck would he have done to this movie except make it worse? You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see George Lucas get all George Lucas with his other films. So he releases American Graffiti the special edition. Yeah. He adds a bunch of extra 19 19- 62 characters to it via computer generated special effects. Yeah. And a couple of aliens. Yeah, like like he had some extra musical scenes, he had some dead people to it. Yeah, like we I, you would be watching the movie again and all of a sudden he'll be like, "Wait a second. Was that was that just fucking Fabian in the background?" Yeah. <laughs> Like, holy shit, that's Greedo. Yeah. What is he doing buying toad alcohol? Yeah. Pretty sure this wasn't in the first one. But it was I pretty, found it was pretty nice of Greedo. <clears throat> I found online on uh archive.org. Uh it's not a perfect quality, but the original 16 millimeter print of Star Wars. Really? And it's really fascinating because like, okay, Greedo shot first and uh, oh, we made Mos Eisley bigger and you think of all the major things that they changed, but it's the little things. You know what's weird? You know what's really weird? Going to see Star Wars and hearing Aunt Beru's actual voice. <laughs> I don't know why they dubbed her, but they dubbed her. And you hear her normal ass voice in the 16 millimeter print. It's the little things that have been added over the years. Even just the fact that like the credits roll, the music plays Star Wars. And then it just says it is a time of deep trouble. There's no ben episode in the morning. four. There's, there was no episode four in the beginning. <laughs> there was no a new hope that wasn't there in 1977. So, like, it's I think there was. No, I there think was there not. was. Nope. Nope. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's fat. It's like the little things that, like, okay, so yeah, in this one scene, while they're doing this shootout, they added flashes. The flashes aren't there anymore. Why did they get rid of? Why did they add the flashes? I guess the, it, it, there are so many little changes that changes that people just haven't noticed, and it it upsets me that he is out here changing all of these movies that he has already done, and it's just man, why don't you just do that with everything? Oh, 
finally, the like 12th cut of THX 1138. Okay, but but doesn't that help back up my point? Like, yeah, no, it absolutely does. W- w- why is he still working on this fucking movie if he got it right the first time? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent question. Oh, I meant to, I meant to, I meant to do this in the monologue, but, um, so you know how Kanye West has been losing his mind? Oh, yeah. Uh, one thing that kind of got lost in the cracks is over the last week or two, he said that he met with, he was hanging out with, uh, Quentin Tarantino and Jamie Foxx. And oh, yes. Django Unchained was his idea. Yes, I had heard this. And that's fascinating because I also heard that he was hanging out with some other uh, movie makers and he's like, I got this great idea for a movie. What if it was a kid's movie, but kids could like stand up and scream at the screen? <laughs> and Christopher Lloyd's there, the Dread Pirate Roberts. You call it Oogie Love. It's going to be the next big thing. <laughs> so that movie was his idea, too. It's surprising how many movies were actually Jamie Foxx's idea. <laughs> well, Kane West did come up with the idea for Django Unchained. Unfortunately, he came up with it a year after it had come out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. It tracks. We have to put this in perspective. Yeah. So that's it for this week. American Graffiti. It's a wonderful film. It's a wonderful film. Let me tell you something. I imagine when you're watching it for the first time in a theater, probably the Wolfman Jack scene is more surprising than like me watching it in 1989 on TV and go, well, that's fucking Wolfman Jack. Yeah. Obviously, I've seen him a million times. Yeah. But I imagine you're watching it in the movies and it's like, okay, you probably can't tell that that's Wolfman Jack, but that's Wolfman Jack. That's Wolfman Jack. Yeah, that's Wolfman Jack. He slicks his hair back. He also uh, takes his steak sloppy. (laughs) He used to be a real piece of shit. Uh, Was he? Well, no, no. A, I'm, I'm just quoting. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson, the oh. greatest television show of all time. <laughs> so that's all I've got for this week. Bonnie, what are we watching next week? In keeping with trying to have some, just some more fun and get away from all the fucking okay. COVID movies and all that and just the hellish landscape that we live in day to day. And uh, So... I, I, I'm guaranteed you're going to like this one. Okay. It is a movie I'd watched once before, but really needs a, a. I need to pay more attention. It it deserves more attention. So we're going to be doing anything, everywhere, all at once, or however the fuck you say it. Didn't we already do that? Did we do that? No, we haven't done that. We haven't? No. We've talked about it here and there. I, I, okay, so there's Werewolves Within. And, uh, El Topo. Wow, I got, I went pretty far. My name is Nobody. Oh, I loved that movie. Okay, (laughs) uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. There's Jim Thorpe. Oh, yeah, 2025, The World Enslaved, Songbird, Virus Shark, Crimes of the Future. Shit, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. Fuck yeah. Oh, hell yeah. E, E, A, A, O. You know who's watched this? I've watched this. Natasha has watched this. Mal has watched this. Maxwell has watched this. Yeah. Ah, oh, I love this movie. I love this movie so much. And the fact that when I first saw it, I, I went to go see it the like once it came out in my small town before it, it was like 
the shit and everybody was talking about it. And I didn't know who the guy was. I was just watching the opening going, shit, that, that, that voice rings a bell. Shit, that voice rings a bell. Shit, that voice rings a bell. Shit, that. Is that fucking short round? <laughs> Holy crap, let me get my phone. Oh my god, that's data from Goonies. Holy shit, I had no idea. <laughs> so, everything everywhere all at once. Oh, I... That movie, legitimately, there was a story that, um, that the movie came out and caused a googly eye shortage. Really? Yeah, that so many people were buying googly eyes and putting them onto everything that it caused a googly eye shortage. I love this movie so much, and and it just it really sucks because there are a lot of movies this year that I that would be my number one favorite movie of the year if it wasn't for everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. Like, there's a movie called Brian and Charles that is so good. Marcel the Shell with Shoes on, an A24 Kids movie. Oh, I love it. Breaks my heart. Uh, I love Don't Worry, Darling. I just got Emerald to watch that, and we have been talking about it for, like, the last two days. I freaking love that movie. I I am undecided about it yet at this point. Okay, I absolutely love it, but, like, Everything, everywhere, all at once. Absolute number one best movie of the year, hands down, bar none. Uh, really excited for this next episode. Thank you, Bunny. Uh, really excited for the next one. But now that I'm looking back at this one, wow, uh, American planking, Doss bunch of boots, uh, Scream Three, and Columbine. Uh, Terrifier Two. I gotta say, I think. Uh, dead ass. This has been a good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I was gonna say that, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the one who gives like the final ranking of the episode as to whether or not it's an okay episode, a fine episode, a good episode, or a damn good episode. That's like S tier. So, yes, I concur. With your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Mayland. And on behalf of, I can hear people running through the house to get to this. (laughs) And on behalf of Natasha and Mal and Eleanor and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. No one has come. <gasps> and, and you, douche waffles and poopy toots. I got to finish this myself. How do I even do it? I don't know. Panic. Okay, do, do Mal's line. And you do fossil and you do fossils and booby tuts. Close enough. Okay, now you do one for you. You spray cans. Okay, now pretend to do Eleanor's, but in an Eleanor voice. What is Eleanor? And you, and then she says something. And you giddy cats. Nice. Ah, and now you're here. Less than a minute on Zoom. And you do swallows and booby touch. Okay.